Welcome everybody to Go Local Live. I'm Josh Fenton, CEO and co-founder. First, before we jump to Dr. Fine, let me give you a couple updates. I want to thank Judge Brian Stern from the Superior Court and Attorney Mark Russo. They're working with the business calendar to try and create a new expedited process to help businesses that are viable businesses from avoiding going straight into a receivership during this economic crisis. Uh, so that, that was informative, and if folks have questions, they can email them over to news at golocalprov. We'll forward them over to the judge and to Attorney Russo and get you a quick response and send those back. We've already gotten some questions in this morning. One o'clock, Governor Raimondo comes back with her daily briefing. Uh, we'll see what she has to say. There was an announcement this morning that there will be additional testing uh, now at the Twin River facility being run by CVS. We'll talk to Dr. Fine about that in one second. Uh, that's today's lineup. Stay tuned. There's news breaking literally by the minute. Uh, Dr. Fine, thanks for, to, for joining us today. Nice to be here as always. Okay, so lots of numbers over the weekend. Do you want to jump into what you're seeing and what the numbers are? Sure. Uh, the numbers continue to rise. Uh, we're about 1.3 million cases around the world. That means just tested cases. There are many, many, many more cases than that, just that haven't been tested yet. We know about 272,000 272, uh, recovered cases, which is good news, um, and 340,000 U.S. cases. Remember, again, there are likely more cases than that. That's just what we know about. Unfortunately, 70,000 deaths around the world. I expect that will go over 100,000 likely this week. 9,600 deaths in the United States. I expect that will go well over 10,000 this week. In Rhode Island, we have 922 cases so far, 25 deaths. Uh, we had 119 new cases yesterday. 103 people in the hospital, but thankfully our our ICU numbers remained relatively stable, and at least according to one uh, public source, it looks like we have plenty of ICU capacity at the moment, which is a really good and important thing. Uh, Dr. Fine, uh, we ran a story this morning. Uh, Councilman Korea in the city of Providence took photos of basketball courts and soccer fields around the state showing uh, groups of people uh, ignoring all the information that has been sent out over the past month, almost nonstop. Uh, in one photo, there's about 15 people playing soccer on a field, some in very, very close quarters. Um, why is the public information bombarded on television, bombarded on the radio, bombarded digitally, not getting through to folks? I think it's a real challenge. The real challenge is communicating to a public that is diverse and that gets many different information sources. You know, I don't think it's it's adequate for any state official to get up in public and say this, that, and the other thing, as important, valuable, and trusted as that person might be. I think the art now is reaching people through every uh, every channel available to us. Um, social media, you know, public information, television, radio. You know, as I've mentioned, we're doing a process of community organizing. I mean, I think some of this is person-to-person -person communication because otherwise people don't really believe what they're hearing. That's part of the challenge of the last 10 years of culture is nobody believes what anybody says anymore unless they get it from somebody they know, trust, and love. Um where do we turn up that volume? Is it have to be just literally peer to peer? I think some of it is peer to peer. I think some of it is, you know, getting people in sound trucks and, and police cruisers uh, to go through the streets broadcasting on their PA system. I think that makes it real to people in a new way. I don't think we've seen that much in the United States, though it's used widely in other parts of the world. Um, I think we have to do some enforcement, unfortunately. I just don't think there's a way to do this without this kind of enforce, enforcement. And let me tell you, the history of public health enforcement goes back 150 years. This is not new. This is what always happens. 
in an epidemic, you gotta find a way to make real and to make it real to people. And part of the way you make it real to people is to to sometimes make them do what you're asking them to do. Unfortunately, understanding that this is an emergency, and we're not t- talking about taking away people's civil liberties. We're talking about protecting the health and safety of all of us. We've been tougher on people from New York than we have been uh, on Rhode Islanders from an enforcement standpoint, in stopping people, informing of them of what the order is, and then monitoring them. Uh, we've done, uh, as best as, as we know, none of that amongst Rhode Island citizens. Uh, does the governor need to step that up, ask police departments to be very vigorous, ask the state police, and if necessary, 15 people over to soccer field, you know, is it time to start making some arrests? Or at least summonses. I, you know, I mean, I think you do this with an escalating approach, but I think all police departments ought to be involved. Like I said, having those cruisers on the street with their PA system, when they see something, they should do something. Um, Dr. Fine, you mentioned uh, before we join on the air that Germany's uh, may have some secret sauce. Let's talk about that. Well, uh, the German secret sauce is probably a little complicated. It looks like their epidemic started with more young people, and that has biased some of their results. Their results are that their case fatality rate is among the lowest in the world. So uh, the number of people who die when they get disease is very low. They do a bunch of things that I don't know of anybody else doing. They have apparently what, what might be called flying squads people who go out to the houses who have been sick for five or six days and use a blood test uh, to try to estimate their risk of really needing uh, more intensive care and, and a ventilator, and they move those people rapidly into the hospital. They do isolation in a robust way. Uh, they are uh, doing lots and lots of testing and lots of contact tracing. They trace everyone, and more importantly, uh, they are testing people even if they're symptom negative, which I think is really important because that's the way we find asymptomatic spreaders. You know, in my version of the world, we ought to be testing everyone at the end of their isolation period um, to see if we can find out if they're positive, even if they have no symptoms, because those are the people who are likely to be spreading the disease asymptomatically. We can really learn a lot from Germany about those strategies. Okay, now, you know, the governor's beginning to get a testing protocol initiated. The state, uh, the National Guard started at the public colleges with appointment only. Today, it was announced that CVS at Twin River would have available testing for up to a thousand or more per day. Let's talk about what kind of testing this is, what kind of information the individuals will learn and what the dangers of potentially this testing will be in that people think that their risk is either much lower or don't understand what the result tells them. Great questions. So here's what we, we don't know that much about the Twin River testing yet. I believe it's still by appointment, but the great news about it is it provides a result, I think within three or four minutes if it's positive and about 10 or 11 minutes if it's negative. So people will get a result right there. That is really valuable. But the important thing is, the, the, and, oh, the one thing I should say is, I haven't yet seen the technical specs on this kind of testing to find out about its false positive and false negative rate. You know, we know that the rest of testing uh, or the testing we're doing so far has a false negative rate of 70 to 80%, which means uh, if you get tested and you're negative, there's still a 20 to 30% chance that you've got the virus. We just didn't see it in your test. Now that's gonna become less over time as the disease becomes more, more frequent uh, for some technical reasons. But even so, that means to me a couple of things. First of all, a positive test has real meaning. Take that seriously. You've got the disease, take care of it. A negative test doesn't get you off the hook. All a negative test means is that the test was negative. If you are somebody who was tested for symptoms and you get a negative test, I think those people still need to isolate for at least seven days or until three days of no fever without uh, fever-lowering medicines 
and uh, three days of declining symptoms. Regardless of what the test shows, I think everybody should do it the same way. The other thing that's really important is a negative test is just a negative test today. Right. It's no insurance policy. It's no guarantee. It just means you were negative at this moment. That doesn't mean that you're not going to be negative tomorrow or pick up the disease two days later. So that means that, you know, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, you know, I'm not positive today, but I, that means I think it's time to redouble your efforts to protect yourself, your family, and the community and make sure you don't get or transmit the disease. It's critical that the, that very definition of what these test results mean gets widely distributed. Listen, we can't even get social distancing at six feet and groups smaller than, than five. How are we going to get that level of message out? Does that have to take place right there in the parking lot? Oh, I think it has to take place in the parking lot, but it also has to take place across the community. As I said, using every channel that we have access to to, make, to communicate this. And what's, what's really tricky is, you know, I don't know how much attention people really pay to this. So we have to come at it again and again and again in every media we have, with every opportunity we have, with every channel we have, in every language people speak, um, using every community organization that we know, you know, working with trusted friends and colleagues because the information people hear and believe best is the information they get from people they know and love. Uh, doctor, where are we in this in Rhode Island? Uh, we've heard yesterday uh, the president say and the Surgeon General uh, say this week and next week are our Pearl Harbor, our 9-11 uh, in New York. Governor Cuomo, I don't want to say celebrated, but at least indicated he hoped and prayed that the uh, slight decrease in the number of deaths was an indication that maybe there was some peaking. In Rhode Island, we just see up and up and up, and the period of time of doubling shorten and shorten and shorten. What does this mean? Well, I think nationally it's gonna be a hard week this week, and for the next three, four, five, seven, eight weeks. We've got a number of weeks of this. Remember, we're seeing this disease in uh, New York. We haven't seen its explosion in LA. You know, we're seeing it in Chicago. Uh, we haven't seen its explosion in Atlanta. Um, we haven't seen its explosion in Miami. But these places are going to follow the same path New York did, eventually more or less. Remember, everybody's going to get the disease. The number of people who are going to get sick is a function of the number of people who get the disease. And it's just how fast they get it and when they get it, not whether they get it. So it's to all of us and it's coming to every place. In Rhode Island, I think we are still on the upswing. You know, we're seeing more and more, it's true, but I don't think we're at the point of explosion just yet. Again, you know, I, I don't want to predict too far because every day I predict the numbers change and I have to change what I'm thinking. Um, but I think we will see it a week or two or three weeks off um, probably not today or tomorrow, or so I hope, but that could change. Remember, when we look at uh, people in the ho numbers of people in the hospital, when we look at numbers of people in the ICU, and when we look at the number of deaths, we're looking at what was going on in our community three and four weeks ago. Um, and so when those people who are out playing soccer are out playing soccer, the illnesses they transmit will show up three and four weeks from now. And that's why I think we've got three or four weeks before we crest and come down again. Um, Thursday or Friday's press conference, uh, Governor Raimondo, after I think a lot of pressuring from Go Local and maybe some other news organizations, had said she would release modeling, uh, the state's modeling today. We'll see if that holds true. Um, what would you look for in that data? You know, the problem is the modeling is just the model. The disease is a uh, fierce taskmaster. And, you know, one hopes that we have pushed the, the peak off two, three, four weeks. 
and we'll get a slower rate of rise and a slow decline. Um, but those are all projections. And, you know, we've got to deal with the people who are getting exposed and getting sick today. And, and you know, the projections are only as good as the assumptions. Um, and the assumptions, you know, I mean, they're, they're all best guesses in a very difficult scenario. You talk to a lot of physicians. You're the former director of health. You have a lot of colleagues. Uh, um, how well has the overall medical community in Rhode Island, uh, there seems to be almost panic in New York, in the call for additional support, retired physicians, uh, different specialties to come forward and be identified as somebody who can step up and help out. How well is that effort going? I can't, I don't have a measure of it. Um, remember, all, more important than doctors are really nurses at this moment. Uh, both nurses and doctors and other health professionals, we're going to desperately need respiratory therapists, for example. But I just have no measure of what the response has been. I hear it's been okay. But again, I don't think that process, from what I've seen, has been organized or articulated yet. And I am, and I've been saying this about workforce for three weeks. The sooner we get this group organized, the sooner we get some training up, because I haven't run a ventilator in, you know, 35 years. Um, and hopefully... Were those, wo were those wooden ventilators then, Dr. <laughs> <That's Mike>? right. <laughs> <laughs> They were made from split wood. <laughs> um, but, you know, many of us are trainable, um, but it's going to take some time to get, a, to get the skills we, we need to be most useful. And I'd love to see us deeply engaged in, you know, lectures and, you know, by Zoom, of course, you know, learning opportunities, you know, a, a repetitive process of learning as much as we can. Many of us are doing that on our own, but in a structured way. So we are prepared to deal with this virus correctly because it's a different, a different thing than many of us have done in a long time. Dr. Fine, last word to you. Um, I think it's important now that testing's available to think about who should get tested. People with symptoms should get tested, though they should isolate until the symptoms resolve, regardless of the results of the test. Um, people in quarantine, in my view, this is not the current recommendation, but in my view, everyone who's been quarantined or isolated should be tested on the 14th day of their quarantine or isolation. Because just because you haven't had symptoms doesn't mean you don't have the disease. And I'd love to see healthcare workers tested aggressively, tested for any symptom, and perhaps when we get more testing up and running, tested weekly, um, because the risk of health workers getting this disease is huge, and the, work, the risk of health workers bringing this disease to people in nursing, nursing, nursing homes and hospitals is also, also large. Now the testing has come, and I'm grateful that it has. Now we have to deploy it and we'll, we'll uh, deploy it aggressively, thoughtfully, and effectively. Dr. Fine, thank you so much. For everyone else, we'll be back at 1 o'clock with Governor Raimondo's press conference. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Stay tuned to updates throughout the day and into the evening. Have a safe afternoon.